Cosmic Coalition here for yet another video for you guys today. Now, Collider. What happened to Collider? What made Collider go downhill so, so fast? So, so fast? The answer to that question is many, many things. I mean, I could sit here behind this camera phone and talk for hours about why I think Collider went downhill. But if I were to boil it down to just a few things, maybe if I can narrow it down to three things, these are the three things that I think it would be, the three main reasons as to why I think Collider went downhill. These are in no particular order, but number one, they stopped caring about movies. I know it's kind of weird to say that a YouTube channel that's basically dedicated to talking about movies stopped caring about movies, but they did. They did. Within the recent years, Collider became less about movie news and movie talk and more about pushing certain agendas, a lot of political agendas. And I don't know about you guys, but this isn't CNN, this isn't Fox News, this isn't whatever news outlet you watch i'm not here for your politics i'm not here um to know your rights to know your stances on certain rights and cert on the president or whatever i'm here for movie news yet collider came became a lot about pers pushing certain agendas um for example also when i say that they stopped caring about movies Everything, on every panel of every show, the conversation about movies became more and more dull and more and more vanilla and there was no conflicting interest. There was never a time that I could think of in recent years that people had a disagreement about a movie. Everybody just on every movie basically had the same stance, the stance that will get them the less you know, the least pushback from fans. Hey, this movie was pretty good. No one loved the movie. No one hated the movie. Everything was just, this is pretty good. And it became boring and bland. And you could tell that a lot of the people they were actually bringing on weren't, didn't even care about movies. And their agenda to push certain things and, and certain agendas they brought on a lot of new people, you know, to be on their certain shows. And I get it. You know, you want to be diverse. You want to have diversity there. And that is an important thing and a very good thing. But they started bringing people on these shows who do not give a shit about movies. And you can tell. You could blatantly tell that a lot of the people they were bringing on these shows didn't know what they were talking about. In my original days of watching Movie Talk, we would have people on on Movie Talk on the on the table who all were passionate about movies. And you could tell they're passionate about movies. Say what you want about John Campia, he's passionate about film. Say what you want about Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, the Smos. They're passionate about movies. Um when it comes to John Schnepp, the King of Shreddies himself, he was very passionate. Um, Jeremy Johns was on there for a while, one of my favorite movie reviewers. Definitely I'm um, passionate about movies. I, mean, I think Chris Stuckman. Um, just so many people were on this show who cared about movies. And now every day when I go and I watch Movie Talk, I see one, maybe two people who care about movies, along with a few other people who have no business being there I don't want to say it like that because then it comes off rude because I'm, I'm never against anyone having a job or making money or hustling and doing what you gotta do so if you don't know shit about movies and you got the opportunity to be on movie talk more power to you it's not your fault it's the people in charge's fault why are you bringing on all these new personalities who don't give a flying shit about movies when I could point out to you thousands of youtubers who are passionate about film who are knowledgeable about film, who who would love the opportunity to do something like a movie talk or uh, or anything for Collider, yet Collider stopped caring about movies. I mean, just look at their deep fake content and all the content that they kept moving forward. We have comic book shopping. 
I love comic books. I love comic books. You guys know I love comic books. I collect toys. I collect all that. But that's not movies. We have the deep fakes. Yes, you could say it has something to do with movies, but it has nothing to do with about people who are passionate about movies and reviewing movies. It's about people who want to go and make a few jokes dressed up like George Lucas. It's, it's bullcrap. You know, everything that Collider kept going forward is pushing themselves away from movies. And that's, that's why I say when Mark Fernandez took over, you can see blatantly that even though this channel's, most of this channel's content is, is about movies and, and has to do with movies, that the, the love and the passion for movies was no longer there on the channel. It was no longer there on the channel. And that's not to say that a lot of the people who work for Collider weren't passionate about movies. Because I believe that Roka and Nemiroff and different people over there are passionate about movies. But when you got the corporate there, this corporate ent ent entity basically overshadowing you and overlooking you. Who, who doesn't really care about movies and is blatantly trying to move in a different di direction. Then I mean, how can you be passionate about your job? So I believe that's one of the main reasons why Collider went downhill because, I mean, we could sit here and debate it all day, but I think it's blatantly obvious if you go look at Collider a few years ago and look at it today, that they don't care about movies anymore. They care about the clicks and the views, which, of course, you're supposed to when you have a YouTube channel, but it's, it's just become less and less about being passionate about film. It's become more and more about clicks and views and money, which... When you're running a business, everything is going to be about money. And I understand that just as well as any anyone should. But when it comes to something like this, the passion has to come first. And then the following and the money and the success come second. If you're not passionate about what you're doing, how can you expect things to be successful? Um back when the people who were on the panels of movie talk and these different shows seemed passionate about movies they were getting more views more clicks making more money when it became more about hey click on this let's make more money let's care less about movies and more about money then you make less money because guess what you're not as passionate something about us movie fans we're very passionate about movies we're very passionate about the people who talk about movies, and we will support you. You could look at John Campia's channel. You could look at SN, SEN Live. These are two people with strong personalities, strong opinions on film, passionate about film. They left and became bigger than Collider itself. John Campia, his show does way better than Movie Talk. SEN Live does better than Movie Talk. You don't know why? Because they're passionate. They have a following, and the success came later, and they understood that. They understood that, and that's something that Collider doesn't understand. Also, one thing my granddaddy taught me, I don't know if anybody ever taught you, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mark Fernandez came in, took something that wasn't broke, and tried to fix it, and tried to do all these different things with it, and it just ran the whole entire company downhill. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. We loved how AMC Movie Talk was. We liked how Movie Talk used to be. You came in, tried to rearrange things, kicked a lot of people out, brought new talent in. Next thing you know, you're at where you're at now. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if you ain't got the passion behind it to begin with, then you cannot expect the support. Passion comes first, and then support, and then money, and then clicks, and then views. But if you ain't got the passion to begin with, best believe none of the other stuff is going to follow suit. I believe Collider failed. Why Collider went downhill is because... They didn't care about their personalities. They didn't care about their talent. One thing that I can say about Collider, as opposed to all other forms of movie entertainment, you know, YouTube channels or anywhere online, Collider had an all-star bunch of people, an all-star bunch of personalities. Like, I'm talking about, this is the Miami Heat of movie reviews. When, my, when LeBron linked up with Chris Rosh and Dwayne Wade, this is the Bulls with Dennis Rodman, Michael Jordan, and Scottie Pippen. That's what Collider was to the movie news realm. Um, they had a ton of personalities, all of which have their own followings, all of which were beloved by movie fans. And they didn't care about them. 
they didn't treat him right. Now I know for a fact that they didn't even get a warning as to the fact that they were losing their jobs. They went away on Christmas break or holiday break and came back to no job. No warning. They knew maybe an hour before we did. In fact, in some cases, I know for a fact that us fans knew before some of the people knew that lost their job. And that's not how you handle any situation. That's not how you handle your talent. That's not how you handle your employees, people who've been employed here, been working for Collider for years and years and years. And they just come to work one day and oh, they don't got a job anymore, basically. And when you stop caring about the personalities, then you have nothing. Uh, someone made a good point that there's no such thing as a Collider fan. I know I call myself a Collider fan, and a lot of us call ourselves Collider fans. But we're not fans of Collider. We're fans of the people who work for Collider. We're fans of Christian Harloff. We're fans of John Campio when he was there. We're fans of Perry Nimrov, Jeff Schneider, John Roca, um, Josh McCuga. The list can go on. We're there for the personalities. We're not there for Collider. You could take Collider and name it anything in the world, and we're still going to be there as long as you have the talent and the personalities there that we're there for. So when you say you're a Collider fan, no one's really a Collider fan. And that's what I think. Maybe Mark Fernandez didn't know that. Maybe the good folks over Collider don't realize that. That they don't have fans. The people who they employ have fans. No one's here for Collider just for the sake to, of watching Collider. We're here for the personalities. And ever since Mark Fernandez took over, blatant, it was blatantly obvious to me that more and more of the talent was leaving. They were leaving or they were getting fired. And I know as of now, we're in a grace period. Like I spoke about in my last video about Collider. We're in a grace period. Where, as a professional, when you in a situation like this, you don't want to say too many negative things about the company you're working for. Because this is a bad look. It's a bad look for your future. It's a bad look for you in the entertainment industry and everything like that. So you don't want to leave a bad taste in anyone's mouth by exposing certain things or saying certain things about your former employer. But, it's obvious that since this guy took over Collider, that a lot of the people who work there no longer wanted to work there. Why? I don't know, I'm not there. But it's obvious as a viewer who's been watching for years and you see, oh, this guy takes over and the next thing you know, oh, John Campy is going on to do his own thing. Hmm, I wonder why. Oh, there goes Jeremy Johns. There goes MOVA. There goes Christian Harloff. There goes this person, that person, that person. Obviously, there's something there. There's a reason there. Then obviously, obviously, there's got to be some conflict of interest or maybe they just downright, downright don't like the guy. For me, I don't know this guy personally. All I know of him is when I've seen him on Rule of Two, which I cannot hardly watch Rule of Two because of him. But, like I said, they, they obviously stopped caring about their talent. And I guess Mark Fernandez and the people that run Collider felt like the talent was interchangeable. That you could just hire any Tom, Dick, and Jane off the street and let them talk movie news and that you're going to get the same amount of views and the same amount of interest in your shows. And that is just not the case. That is far from the case. Um, the reason why we were invested in movie talk so much back in the day it's because of the personalities and how the personalities interacted. You would watch those shows and feel like you were with a group of friends talking movies because the people on the panel talking movies all knew each other, all had a relationship with each other for years, a friendship or, or some type of something, and you could see the connection there between them, which made you feel more connected to the show. Nowadays, when you watch movie talk and you see an interchangeable panel of people on there who barely know each other, have no chemistry, you are no longer connected with it. Because I can tell you right now, none of us are watching this thing for movie news. We like movie news. Yeah, we want to stay up to date with movie news. But when it comes down to it, we've watched Collider. We've watched Movie Talk. We've watched Collider Live. We've watched Heroes. We've watched all of this. 
because we like the personalities. Now for me, I know for me, I watch it more so for the personalities than I do the movie news. Even though I love movie news, I love, I love staying up to date with these things and talking movies, but when you don't take care of your talent, you don't take care of your employees, it's a bad look. And you can't expect other people to support you if you're not supporting the people on your own team. On your own team. It's never going to work out. But damn sure not least, I believe that Collider stopped caring about its fans and lost touch with its core fan base. Now, when you have a YouTube channel, your core fan base, in my opinion, is your most important. Sure, you're going to have subscribers, you're going to have fans, you're going to have people who watch your content from time to time. But your core fan base, the ones who are there to thick and thin, the ones who are going to support you no matter where you go, you have to be very careful with your core fan base. And you have to please your core fan base. And that's just something that Collider stopped caring about doing. It cared more about pandering to social justice warriors, to being woke. It started pandering toward their woke culture, or culture instead of to the movie culture, to the cinephiles, to the people who love films, to the people who are here for you. You stop making content geared toward those folks and made it towards the socially woke justice warriors. I understand it's a slippery slope out there. But when you start pandering towards a certain demographic and you lose sight of who your core fan base is, you have little to no hope of being successful. Because sure, these people will come in for the time being and watch a couple videos and click on a couple videos. But are they really going to be there through the thick and thin of things? Are they going to be there as you try new things? Are they going to be there for the old things? When you lose sight of who your core fan base is, you lose sight of what your channel was to begin with. I've noticed over on Collider that a lot of the movie talk um, topics and headlines started becoming clickbaity. A lot of the movies and content that they would talk about started becoming more socially, for the, for, for the sake of being socially woke instead of being actually passionate about the film at hand. Also, like I said, everything became very vanilla, very stale very non-confrontational um which is not what us movie fans want when us cinephiles and us movie fans watch you guys and gals however many of you may be sit down at a table what we don't want to see is all you guys giving bland opinions about a movie and all agreeing on a movie <clears throat> what do you think makes shows like first take so popular and so successful it's the fact that you have people here who are clearly passionate about sports who have conflicting views about sports and they debate about it they talk about it it gets interesting sometimes it gets steamy and hot and that's what we want with our movie takes when you sit down with a panel of guests and everybody has the same bland vanilla take on each movie it becomes pointless. Literally every single movie they talk about, they all have the same views of, views on it. And if it ain't something that doesn't further the narrative of like these different social movements going on in Hollywood at the time, then they're going to spend little to no time talking about it. Um, I noticed that Collider started making videos to where they wouldn't offend anyone. They wanted to get, grasp the widest audience they could while forgetting about their core fan base who actually cared about movies. I noticed this started happening way back when Superman vs. Batman came out. It was a very controversial film. There was a line drawn in the sand. Either you liked the movie or you hated it. I hated it. I remember 
I know how social media works. Um, before I got into YouTube and different things, I was really big on Instagram. I have about 10.4K followers on Instagram at the moment. And I remember when I left my review for Batman vs. Superman. And if you know me, you know about anything that I do on this channel or anywhere, I'm always going to keep it 100 with you. I'm going to always tell you how I feel unfiltered. And that's what us movie fans liked about Movie Talk. That's what the core fan base of Collider liked about their content is that you would get all these different personalities, all these different opinions, and you you would enjoy the conflict of things. Not that you have to sit down and be at each other's throats, but movies and film are subjective. Not everybody's going to like the same thing. So when you're telling me that you have five people sitting at the table and everybody feels the same exact way about everything and no one has any controversial hot takes or anything or any movie, it gets bland. But anyways, after Batman vs. Superman, I left my review of it on Instagram. A very negative review. I hated the movie. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And I lost two or three hundred subscribers that day. Or 200, 300 followers. Might not seem like a lot, but when you only got... <coughs> I wasn't as big on Instagram then as I am now. But that's a good bit when you're small. Also, The Last Jedi. I noticed a lot of it after The Last Jedi. Very, um... A very controversial film. When I posted my review for The Last Jedi on my YouTube channel, I lost... You know, almost 100 to 200 subscribers. I'm a small YouTube channel, only a couple thousand subscribers, so that's a big deal. But I realized, hey, when it comes to things like movies, you're either going to be an honest person, give your, your honest takes on it, and allow your core fan base to accept you for who you are and your own opinions, or you can make videos pandering to the wide audience where you will never give a hot take, you will never like something too much, or dislike something too much just for the sake of not getting any backlash from anyone else and that's what Collider has become they lost sight of who their core fan base is real cinephiles real movie buffs real movie fans who don't mind different opinions on film we come to watch your content to see other people's takes to see maybe this person agree with me or maybe this person disagree with me and here's why we don't come for you to pander to us like we're just the general audience of people out there you know we don't want you to make content to where you're scared to upset certain people. You know what I mean? So when you lost sight of your core fan base and you started making videos to pander to a wider audience, a wider audience who doesn't really care about your content, they're just there to be social justice warriors and to make sure that you're not saying or doing anything against what is socially just at the moment that's the only reason you're getting the views hey we watch this you're pandering towards us good keep it going we don't really care we're not really here to watch your content we're just here to make sure you don't say anything that offends us because that's what a lot of social media has become people click on things and they're just happy as long as you don't offend them somehow some way people do not understand there's different opinions it's all about don't offend me don't say anything that I could even possibly be offended by. And that's what Collider started doing. They started pandering towards the wider audience of people who aren't really there to watch your content. They're just there to police your content and make sure that everything is socially woke and just enough to their standards. And that's what Collider became. You stop seeing hot takes. You stop, you stop seeing movie debates. You stop seeing all of those things and it all just became one big bland whatever it is now so that I believe is one of the main reasons why Collider went downhill and it happened slowly but surely I watched it like I said I noticed it after Batman vs Superman when I saw a lot of the panelists somehow kind of liked Batman vs Superman which I mean like we said film is subjective there's plenty of people out there who like the movie but it kind of became obvious that the people who really hated the movie weren't really allowed to speak on how much they hated the movie the same goes with The Last Jedi. A lot of the people there on Collider did not like that movie. They didn't. But for the sake of Collider, they act like it's one of the best Star Wars movies ever made. And that's just being honest. You can look into it. You can look into it. I'm telling you, some people have come out and talked about it. But yeah, 
that's one of the main reasons why I think Collider went downhill. Now, like I said, there's plenty of other reasons. I could sit here and talk to you guys about it all day. If you want to talk about it more, drop a comment down below and we could talk about this as much as you guys want. If you agree, disagree, maybe other reasons as to why you think they went downhill. Maybe you have some inside information. Maybe you just have a hot take or an opinion that you would like to get out there. So be sure to leave those down in the comments below. Um, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to hit that like button. And be sure to just to support, support content creators, support people's individual channels, not just mine, but other people's channels, because we're passionate about this. It's not easy getting behind camera. And a lot of us are trying to do this on our own without big corporate entities like Collider, you know, getting involved. So be sure to support those people. And always, you have a good day, YouTube.